look at that. They just decimated this tray of microgreens, which is exactly what I wanted them to do. Um, chickens really, really love to forage. It's one of their chicken skills. Oh, here we are, good morning. It is, what, day four? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. It is day four with these chickens. We did have a loss last night. I'm not sure if it was because little dude looked like he got trampled. My kids had been in here and I think maybe they had gotten scared and they like ran over him or something. Um, it's It can be a challenge to balance the chicks and the kids because the kids want to be in here so bad, but these um, birds are, you know, they're a little bit afeard of children and um, they can, um, they can spook really easily. Um, and so I'm not sure if that was the one that had a little bum leg. We, we did have one that we noticed day two that Spencer noticed she wasn't walking around good. And I've spoke about this before, how Cornish Cross can tend to have leg problems. Um, and I've seen this exact same kind of leg issue on a Cornish before that made it all the way to harvest. Uh, we did actually have two pasty butts yesterday too. I didn't take video of that because it was a little bit hard to do. I didn't have a, I didn't really have time to kind of set up my camera. Sometimes you don't really have time to get footage of stuff. Um, so I took those two babies out. I washed their little butts under warm water and then I blew, I blowed them dry with a, the, the lighter heat setting on the blow dryer and added a little Vaseline to their little bum shoot and there hasn't been any issues. Uh, pasty butt is one of those things that it's uh, it can happen from either them being too cold or them being too hot. <laughs> I hung my little handy dandy garden thermometer in here so we can see where they're at. Uh, they weren't really enjoying it being in here about 90 to 95 so we let it go down to about 80 and they seem a lot happier with that. So they're pretty happy little babies. I think I may even replant this for them and grow them some more. It only takes about like five to seven days to grow a tray of microgreens. And as you can see, the birds really loved it. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, chickens are great foragers. I've talked about this. They're amazingly curious. They can actually eat around a third of their diet solely in like grass forage. So they really enjoy plants. Um, they're omnivores. And there's um, a lot of really wonderful things in the chlorophyll of plants. It actually changes the, uh, it really changes the fat in a chicken, which is partially why we want them pastured. Uh, pastured poultry is a step above any other poultry that you're ever gonna eat, you guys. They need grass, they want grass. It helps them to stay healthy and it also turns their fat into the most gloriously yellow, beautiful, sun-colored fat. And it tastes completely different than store-bought chicken. If you don't know this, chicken fat shouldn't be like whitish gray. It shouldn't. It really should be a beautiful yellow color, kind of like the color of these babies right now. So, um, that's what we're aiming for. So I wanted to get these babies a first time um, practice run on foraging. If uh, they had a mama hen, mama hen would be out there showing them what tastes good and what to peck on. And as you saw in the last video, they immediately just jumped right on that thing. And it only took them about six hours to completely knock it down. And I left it in here overnight so that they could um, mess around with the root systems and stuff. And I'll show you guys this, hold on. You can see how this side is like so much lower than this side. The soil was all the same level, but now they're starting to actually scratch, which is another chicken talent. They're amazing um, shallow tillers. I mean, they can get really crazy and dig some bad holes if you leave them in a spot for too long. But that's why these chickens will be in mobile tractors with mobile netting, so they will be moved every day once they're out on the pasture. So they won't have the chance to destroy the ground, but they will have the chance to kind of lightly aerate it, fertilize it by pooping, and they're gonna be getting that wonderful forage that they need. So there you have it. We're gonna get you out of this pool today, little babies. Get you a bunch more space. 
because your Goosey Goose friends are gonna be here in a matter of days. I haven't mentioned this yet, but we also like to have protection geese with our chickens because they're loud, they're wonderful security systems, they're very territorial. They really, if you raise a goose by itself with chickens, they think that they're chickens and they're very territorial, like I said, so they'll protect their babies. And hopefully um, we can actually get a Christmas goose out of this this time. My last goose we sold to a sanctuary before we left Oregon. And so I, I missed out on the Christmas goose, but I really am desiring to bring a Christmas goose to our dining room table for our family. Okay, so here it is. Um, we got it filled with um, just a couple, few inches of the maple mulch that we got the other day. And we used these old closet doors that came off of all the closets in our house that we aren't gonna use, so that's free. Greenhouse plastic that I already had that I hoarded from Oregon that we never used and so we're not going to be building a greenhouse or hoop house anytime soon, so we figured we'd use that plastic. And then we will cover this with a smaller, finer pine shavings for the birds. And this is where they will be housed until we take them out on the pasture. Much bigger, way more spacious for them. So <laughs> we're going to eat some dinner and then we will get this all set up for them and get them tucked in for the night. All tucked in for the night. What have you been doing in here? Covering poop. Covering poop. We mentioned briefly about how we use the deep, um, the deep litter bedding method. Um, and basically, so we filled the very bottom with like two inches of our maple wood chips from the recent chip drop that we got. And then we threw all of the kind of partially spent shavings from the kiddie pool in here because when you layer it like that, not all of it gets absorbed into there. So we kind of turned it in like a compost-ish sense and added it to the top. And then we just covered wet spots with the new shavings. So what this does is it actually creates like a kind of a composting uh, situation basically in the deeper parts. It takes a little bit, but as you add onto there, the chicken's um, poop is a really full of nitrogen, so it starts to break down almost immediately and it can actually generate its own heat. So this is really a good thing for if you have chickens overwintering in like a static stationary coop, you can deep litter bed their coop and just keep adding to it over the winter time and it will slowly compost down on the very basal layers, therefore generating some heat in the coop and keeping the birds um, feet warm, keeping the bottom of the coop from freezing. 
and uh, and yeah, it actually creates the most amazing garden compost. What you might think of this as being like uh, a lot of waste, like, oh, this system creates a lot of waste, but in fact, it doesn't create any waste. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that if you're growing meat chickens, then you're probably also growing a garden. They're almost like, these kind of things go pretty close hand in hand. And so this is not waste. You are creating, you're putting um, carbon down, which would naturally break down and compost back into the earth and turn into dirt anyways. Um, you've got that chicken manure in there that can speed up that process and it can be really great for fertilizing your garden. And we're really grateful for them and their little poops because that's gonna feed and um, that's gonna feed back into our garden and kind of close that loop, right? So if we had no garden, we would have to do something with all of this like shavings, waste, and poop. But we're gonna close that loop and we're going to put it back into our garden so that it can further so that it can further the cycle of like life in the ground. So what Murphy does is she just has a little pot that she dips into the shaving bag over there. We always, always keep a big bag of shavings. I usually keep it in like a metal trash can, but um, when you move and you get rid of all your farm infrastructure, you don't have those anymore. <laughs> so I, we've just got it in the bag, but usually it's nice to keep it in a trash can so that it, oh, but that's for dad. It's nice to keep it in a trash can so it stays dry because you don't want the, you don't want your carbonaceous diaper to be wet going in there because then that doesn't really help the situation. So what she was doing is she was just sprinkling shavings over the little dookies and it actually cuts down on the smell. You can barely see them. They look like mm -hmm. They do. Well, and I'm really close to this thing. You guys obviously can't smell it, but I'm very close to this. Um, I'm probably like 18 inches away from where the chips are. My nose to the, to the chips and I don't smell poop. I smell pine shavings. So that's the whole point is another, yeah. it's another thing we were talking about with um, like 90% of farming being observation. Oh gosh, um, you need, you can uh, really trust your nose, really trust your nose, trust your eyes, trust your ears, um, trust your, your farm intuition because. You're gonna choke these poop. Oh yeah, get those out of there. She's also getting the shavings out of there. So yeah, really just trust your nose. If you smell things, cover it up with shavings. And we just do this, um, everybody in our family at this point, other than the little tiny people, is trained to do this. So we don't have to tell anybody anymore. We don't have to really think about it. Whenever anybody's out here, I'm constantly catching Murphy and Ireland and Spencer out here observing, covering up shavings, pulling shavings out of waters, pulling shavings out of the feeder. So I, I had to like put the cap on on the water and mm -hmm. actually like dump the Yep, chicken. it's a team effort. We're all doing it together, but see when we're all kind of observing and we're all doing a little bit of work all the time, um, they're safer because there's more people watching out for them. They're cleaner because there's, yeah, more people checking on their poop and they're just, I think they're all together happier when it's done in a, in a team fashion like this. There's a lot of eyes to keep, um, to keep in check with these little babies. We also turned this one off because we don't need the third one during the day, but Spencer had to run out in the middle of the night last night, basically. Luckily, we live like a mile from Walmart to get another heat bulb because we realized pretty quickly that these two um, heat lamps weren't gonna keep them warm enough out here. We did put a radiant heater right next to here and that was like wafting really warm air over them all night and it actually warmed the slab, which is awesome. One of our um, big projects that we will hope to accomplish this year is to insulate this garage so that it's a more usable space in the really hot heat of the summer and the super cold negative temperatures of the winter. But they did okay. They did okay.